Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. I'm bringing on to bite-sized pieces. So today I want to do a little bit something different. Uh, we know the news is the news. Uh, the market's still there. Nothing really uh, fantastic is going on. Bitcoin's still hovering around 59,000, 1.8 trillion. And today is the date of uh, March 20th. It is uh, 8 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. So just like the title talks about, uh, I need your help. And what I need your help is to really go over a couple of things. And there's really three things I need to go over first, and it'll be apparently clear when I actually talk about it. So the first thing that we're talking about is uh, diversification. The next part is education. The last part is charity. And uh, these things then become abundantly clear until this week when I actually came about and I got my uh, vaccine shot for COVID-19. I know some people say, you know, don't get the shot, whatever else. Well, I got it. So what are you going to do? But when I was there, I, I saw an old friend uh, who I hadn't seen her in a long time. And uh, she came up to me and I go, hey, what are you doing working here at the Coliseum? Because, you know, you are, she is in uh, the hotel industry and she was a top of like 13 different chains. She was really high up in sales. Uh, she was a manager of, uh, you know, multi different places. And she goes, I got furloughed and, uh, you know, no money coming in. So I started to work here for part time. And then this one, this goes away. Who knows? I don't know. The hotel industry is pretty bad. So I thought about it. I said, you know, it's when we think about people who are hurting, we don't really look around too much. Some of you right now, you myself, you yourself may be hurting right now for because of the coronavirus, uh, either job or you know wh whatever else is going on, maybe health wise. So when I took a look at this, I started to think to myself, okay, what what do I need to do to make sure that I can help not just you know my friends and the people around me, but the people in my community and the people on my channel. So I put this together uh, real quick and just to talk about uh, diversification, education, and charity. So the first thing I want to talk about was this, and it's all about diversification because what's wrong with my friend here uh, in the hotel industry? She got blindsided. And it's like, it's like nothing you can do uh, sometimes, just sometimes that these things pop up, right? But a lot of times, if you can just take a look uh, ahead in the future, and this doesn't always work every time, but if you can take a look at where things are going, not where things are, but where things are going, then usually it works out a little bit better for you because you're not stuck in the same place. The reason why you're here watching this video is because you realize what's going on with the financial industry, the banking industry, uh, the crazy quantitative easing and money printing and the downfall of uh, different countries because they are overprinting and overstimulating for all this different cash and fiat, whatever else. And you realize that there's a much better way and that's called cryptocurrency and digital assets. So if you can realize that, maybe like just take a look uh, a little bit further uh, about what could potentially happen. And I want to give you a quick example, which is this. In When there was a financial crisis in 20, 2007, 2009, there was a bunch of companies that were started up because even though there was a crisis, there was a lot of problems. They knew that these problems needed to be fixed and they thought to themselves, how can we fix this? And here's some prime examples. Uber came about and said, well, during the financial crisis, when GDP fell 4.3%, unemployment reached 10%, recession lasted for 18 months, people needed jobs, right? So if you need jobs, why don't you just be a job creator? So Uber said, you know what? People are getting their houses foreclosed, but they still have their cars. So why don't we do it and give an app to where we could have drivers and these drivers can use their cars and pick up people. They're brilliant, right? It didn't cost too much. Now it's a multi-billion dollar industry. So that's that's part of it. Airbnb thought the same thing at the same time. They go, you know what people, if they are going to travel, they can't afford these expensive hotels. What about just renting a person's room? Airbnb worked out. They looked, they saw a problem, looked in the future and they fixed it, right? Uh, Square, same thing. They go, you know, we can make payments easier. Uh, they started around this time. Groupon said, you know what? Uh, businesses are hurting. They don't want to, uh, they need to get their message out there. They don't have uh, money to put in newspapers. Let's go online. That's what Groupon did. And then Venmo, Zelle, whatever you want to call it, they realized the payment system sucked, just like you, you do realize now. They're like, you know what? We'll make that even easier. And then on top of that, uh, we also had LinkedIn. LinkedIn around this time, it was created actually in, it started in 2000, 2003. But it really hit its stride in around 2007 uh, when everything started to really hit. Because why? People needed jobs and they were all hurting. So LinkedIn was a great way to network online and off you go. So when we when we took a look, when we take a look at these things, I want people to realize where we are going. We are not going to stay in the same way in this centralized financial system. It's not going to happen. Uh, borders are going to break down, and uh, there's going to be a, a large rush into cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And we see that right now with, with banks, with institutions, with corporations, and everything else. So 
if we can just take a look forward, you know, all the people that are out there, uh, we need to, to really figure this out and say, you know what, for all the people that are out there, they have to understand that we need to instruct them and teach them about where things are going. If I could have reached out to more people and reach more people like my friend over there at the Coliseum, and I could have told her, you know, a year ago, uh, actually a year and a half ago when I started the channel. Hey, you know what? This is a great thing called cryptocurrencies and digital assets. You should probably look to invest into them. Again, this is not, I can't give anybody financial advice, but I can, I'm doing their research. They could have been ahead of the curve. All the money that they put into it, instead of putting it into stocks and bonds and or doing some crappy savings account, which yielded them 0.05% in the bank, they would have been, they would have had a nice little nest egg and they wouldn't have been hurting so much like a lot of people out there are. And uh, I think it would be a much better situation because when I talk to her, it's not a great situation for her and her husband and her kids right now. So if I just would have been there to instruct and teach, uh, maybe this would have been a better situation for everybody. All right. So that is what we are talking about uh, as far as uh, diversification or, or just talking about uh, uh, education uh, to get it going. So also, when we talk about these things, um, we talk about diversification, I should say. It would be great, again, if they didn't stick in the banks and everything else. So how do we diversify now? Now that we're in cryptocurrency digital assets, that's great, but we still need to diversify even more. And this is the thing that I talk about because, I mean, we never know where things could potentially go, right? So I did this, uh, it was a video, which I'll link at the very end, the, my uh, exit strategy and how I'm going to diversify because I don't think that that everything will go up forever. And at some point there's gonna be a, a bear market. Now, what goes up must come down. I don't know if we're gonna have like another, you know, two year bear market like we did before. I know people will talk about how, no, 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 you don't understand Rob, institutions are here, they'll never sell. Sure. I believe they will. I believe they'll take profits at some point because once that hockey stick comes, uh, it's gonna be a FOMO and the smart minds be like, you know what, this is topped out. This is crazy. This is a, this is a bubble, like all bubbles are, and they're going to cash out. I don't want people to be left in the dust. So. This is my diversification plan on just to get from like my friend to go from this one area to where she's like, I have no idea what cryptocurrencies are, digital assets. Okay, now I know what they are. Okay, great. I can get into those. I can invest into those and I can take my profits and then I can do into this type of diversification and I can go right back into cryptocurrency and digital assets. You know, when I see that time when things are dipping, because uh, that I think is, is one of the best uh, reasonings for that. So for me, for my exit strategy, uh, it's going to be an 80-20 split, except for Bitcoin. I'm going to leave 50% in the market, 50% goes out. And this is how I'm going to do it. 10% in cash, 25% in stable coins uh, because of the uh, interest. This is always nice to put someplace because, hey, you know what? I do nothing. I get eight between 8 and 11%. 15% will go into land. 20% will go into uh, investment properties. 10% uh, will go back in my business, Amazon FBA. 15% will still remain in staking, and 5% will go into a Roth IRA because I can. Uh, it's tax-free uh, for all the different gains. On top of the fact uh, that all the different staking that I do for Ethereum and um, uh, Polkadot will also be tax-free. So again, I'll link the video at the very end as far as the exit strategy, but the idea is to not get trapped into one thing and then to go into others because we never know. You, who would have thought that the entire economies would have shut down because of a pandemic uh, for so long, right? Here we are. So I think it's always good to diversify. Now you can just say, you know, Rob, I don't want to do all that. I'm just going to stick it all into, into uh, tomato coin and I'll let it ride. Sure, you, you can do that, but this is my plan. And if it, this resonates with you, then use this. If it doesn't, uh, then don't and just go on your way. So again, we go from somebody who doesn't know uh, and then to somebody who know, then somebody knows about cryptocurrency digital assets to somebody who can diversify and move back and forth between all these different asset classes, I think is uh, one of the better ways to do things. Okay, so on top of that, uh, when we talk about um, these properties, investment properties. I think these are one of the one of the best ways. This is our investment property here in Houston. Just started up, bought it, uh, picks it all up. Now it's booked right now. It's almost booked uh, four and a half months solid 
from people with Airbnb. So you can uh, check out that video when I talk about uh, Airbnb and how it all works and the cash out alternatives. You can find that at uh, danteachescrypto.com. I made this website 100% free. The reason is because uh, I think people don't need to pay me money. They need to put that into cryptocurrency digital assets. And of course, people throughout the world, uh, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, a lot of money. So why would, why would I have them do that? I just want them to learn. So go right there and you can learn everything you need to know about cryptocurrency lessons. Well, not everything, but a pretty good amount, right? So this is the part about, so we went from diversification, now education. So this is where I need your help. Um, you have friends, you try to educate them as best you can. And this is good that you try to do that. If if you can't get it through their thick heads about what's going on, just share my website with them and uh, just, you know, so you don't have to waste your breath. I did all the hard work for you, really. Uh, just have them send, just send them over there. And the reason why I'm asking for this now is because um, I'm worried. I'm worried about what is going to happen in not the distant future, like five years. Like I'm worried about what's going to happen in the next six months to a year, especially with what's going on. So like, uh, like I was talking about with uh, my friend Digital Dave uh, over Crazy for Cryptos. If we can just, just grab everybody uh, into our life raft as much as possible and educate them on crypto and digital assets, uh, the more we can get in here, the better. And then they don't get left behind for the coming collapse of whatever it is. And who knows what could happen? I don't know. I'm not a, a mystic. I don't have a crystal ball. But I think, again, diversification is the best way. So if we can just pull everybody in as much as possible, that's great. The thing is, I can't do it by myself. I need you, I need you to help me uh, educate all your friends and all your family and uh, you know, do your best. And then if you need more help, just send it to my website and that'll be it. So that's diversification and education. I think as time goes, goes on, you know, the greatest thing we can do is really just give back to people, right? I mean, if, if you got... A couple million dollars, that's great, right? But you know what's even greater is helping a person get out of poverty or get out of debt and get out of a really bad financial situation. Uh, trust me, <laughs> I've been in both, situ in both situations and uh, it's, it's way better just to give back. And uh, that's, that's how I feel about things. So when we talk about that, so we talk about diversification. Now we talk about education. And by doing that, we can lift people up and out and help them out. Uh, but the last part is charity. So with charity, this is a very tricky subject uh, because I was watching a, it was a documentary, it's called uh, Billions and Change. It was the, um, uh, the founder of Five Hour Energy. And he just talks about how he, he was a billionaire and he's like, I used to give away money, but it's like throwing sand in the ocean. It just, either it gets wasted or it's not allocated correctly. So what I need to do is put money into something that actually works and works for it. And then he talks about these like five different inventions that he did to change the world, which was a pretty good, uh, pretty good video actually. So what I'm talking about is not just giving money to, to a charity and just going, there you go, there's money, do whatever you want with it. You can do that. That's great. It's great to give back, right? And uh, that's fine. But the thing I always worry about is, and this is what me and my wife talk about all the time, is like, where's that money going? Do we know what's going on with it? Do we know that it's really going to the people that we say it's going to? So this is what I'm going to challenge everybody else uh, out there with. And I don't know what your financial situation is. If you can give, great. If you can't, you can't. But this is what I, I stumbled across, and it was uh, Kiva, Kiva.org. And interesting enough, oops, wrong one. Let me, let me go back. Uh, yeah, interesting enough. When I talk about, uh, I call it the Ethereum Mafia. These are all the guys that uh, uh, created uh, Ethereum, and now they've gone on to their respective uh, projects. Dr. Gavin Wood with Polkadot, Hoskinson for Cardano. Uh, uh, Elise, Vitalik Buterin, I mean, well, he's still there. Joseph Lubin, billionaire, founder of Consensus. Great. And I got this idea from this little pie chart, and it was called the PayPal Mafia. And one of these guys, and he, and he, so you know these guys. Well, first of all, Steve Chen, he's co-founder of YouTube. He's also an advisor for Theta, just so you know. And then uh, you've got, uh, here's somebody, uh, this guy named Elon Musk. I don't know if you've heard of him. Seems like a big guy. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, also the founder of PayPal, created LinkedIn and Slide and Yelp, blah, 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 right? But there's one called Kiva. I never knew what it was. Uh, I just kind of bypassed it. I, I honestly thought it was a supplement company. <laughs> That's just me. So this uh, was uh, Primal Shah, and he created Kiva. And Kiva, what it is, is it's a way to give these microloans to people all throughout the world who just need small amounts of money. They will pay you back. And this helps them in all ranges and all walks of life. So like, 
uh, let me see here. So you scroll down like this one, this lady, Philippines. She needs a loan of 225 to build a toilet, I guess, for her business, okay? Christy here, she needs help uh, purchase additional packs of frozen foods to sell. Uh, this lady is uh, uh, Mary Baptiste. She needs a loan of 275 to increase her stock of merchandise, and on and on and on. And what's, what's great about this one, first of all, I, my wife turned me on to it because she's like, hey, we looked at Kiva. I was like, I know you're talking about and this is what it is. So we give these micro loans and she's been doing it for like three years now and she always gets paid back. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. And you don't have to pay a lot, just a little bit here and there. So when I think about this, I think to myself, okay, where is the breakdown and is that money really going to it? So we take a look at Kiva. Uh, first of all, it's really well run. Guy knew what, he, what he's doing when he created the billion dollar PayPal. Now he came over here to Kiva. And he talks about due diligence and monitoring. And if you look in the FAQ and the statistics, 97% of people get paid back for these micro loans. So if you're leery about giving away to charity after you've made a ton of money in crypto, this might be a good idea. If you still want to do charity, sure, uh, you know that's fine. But for us to make big change, uh, I can't. Again, I can't do it by myself. I need you to. I need you to help me. And uh, if you can, that'd be great. So when we talk about due diligence. It talks about, we encourage all lenders to loan about the risks of lending. Again, they still have 97% uh, payback rate. Most loans in Kiva are administered by one of our local partners, working in more than 80 countries. Kiva conducts due diligence on field partners. And just so you know, almost all Kiva loans for borrowers in the US are direct loans, which are not administered by a field partner. So that's pretty cool. So what I did was I just picked three. Uh, there was one for energy in Mali, uh, Guatemala, Jasmine's de la Toma group. They needed uh, to help clothes and shoes to help her customers. And the Zawada group needed uh, bags of rice, sure. So 517. And the plan is moving forward is uh, when I created, or part of me, <laughs> I have a team that helps me out, trust me, for the DNU stake pool for Cardano, from this day forward, uh, every time we receive a staking reward, which is an epoch, every epoch, epic, excuse me, Charles Hoskins says epic, I'll just say it that way. Do not correct me. That's what he says. Uh, that's just how it is. So uh, for the staking pool uh, for D News, and you can see it's very transparent. 99% of time, if you want to stake your Cardano, this is the best way. It never leaves your wallet. Super safe. Cardano is a great uh, staking experience, in my my opinion. You can watch the video down here. Um, for every epic, for every reward uh, that we get from now on, we'll be donating 100 ADA, however much that is in money. Uh, to one of these charities uh, given by Kiva. So that will be added in to our mission statement uh, for uh, the DNU stake pool. So uh, that is it. That is really the big deal. And uh, that's all I want to say. I just, I can only, I can only do so much and talk so much. And uh, of course, I think that we're in the right place at the right time with the right products. Uh, especially with crypto and digital assets. Now, you can buy the Lambos, you can buy beautiful houses, and you can do the traveling, whatever else. I've done those things, and I can just tell you that there's only so much of that you can do in that rock star life. When I was in two years in Vegas, I did that, and uh, it's, there's only so much you can do with that. And uh, if you could uh, come with me on this trip, I'd really appreciate it, and uh, that is all. So look, if, um, if you found value in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That would really help, it always helps. Also, on top of that, consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. This really isn't. <laughs> we'll talk about news uh, most of the days. And that is it. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.